Welcome to the course, Digital Storytelling. My name is Luca Pishkoretz. Yeah, okay, so when Photoshop opens, usually there is nothing, there's just some kind of recent stuff here that you can open. Uh, so you would need to open um, either a new canvas or you can just import an image uh, directly. So you can either go here under new and just open a kind of a blank. Maybe I go here under print, uh, you know, what is it, A4. Kind of create, so I get I get the black, um, sorry, a white sheet of paper. So when it'll come, or you can just directly import an image. Okay, so uh, okay, either that, and then I'll actually put in a photograph that I have. So I have many photographs actually, um, and I will give some of these very clean, clean examples. So you can just take an image that you have on your computer and just drag and drop it into Photoshop. Go in, and then you have to be careful. You're not dropping it here in the main part, but you have to go here under tabs, copy, and it will just open it. Okay, or you can just go under file, open, and you can just open a, open an image here. Okay, um, so Photoshop, when you start, it looks like this. Um, it opens your image in a, in a tab, or so, and then if you have more, you can have multiple images open. Uh, and these are then organized in these tabs. There's a name here of the image and you can just open as many as you want because very often you want to work with multiple uh, multiple images at the same time. So you want to copy paste from one to the other and so on. Uh, there's this main toolbar on the left with basically all the tools that you kind of uh, need. Uh, and you can actually rearrange this workspace by going here under I think window, arrange, you can arrange, you can kind of rearrange the whole workspace depending on your preferences. And then workspace, you can sort of customize it for different things. Maybe if you're working with photography or if you're working with paintings, you, like if you do digital illustration, you need just different tools uh, and, and so on. So we would just use this kind of essential. So this is just all according to your preferences. But under default, um, the tools are here on the left. and as you're clicking on the tools, there are these quick options here that are kind of changing. Or so if I click on them, uh, certain like extra, so extra options that I need for that tool will appear here on the top bar. So if I click here, select, suddenly there's some options appearing and, and so on. There's a healing brush here and then some things that appear here. So these are basically the, um, the settings for these tools that you have on the on the on the left. Also, these tools here are stacked. Uh, that's also very common now. Uh, these days, uh, you would just click and hold, and then they would you would have uh, more options here that would open. Or so if you remember, I was mentioning the burn and uh, dodge tools. So they're here. Uh, there's burn, but if I click and hold, I have dodge, burn, and this sponge tool. So that's just that I showed uh, a little bit before. And then there's even more here on these dots, uh, I think things should appear or they should not appear depending on how uh, you can have some presets and so on. Okay, um, there's a zoom here. So first I'll show you a little bit um, or explain the, nav the navigation. There's a zoom tool here and you know, zoom, click in and zoom out is hmm, like this, but I'm actually using a shortcut. So uh, if you, uh, there's alt also, you can use alt key uh, you can have any tool and if you have alt, you press alt and you you go with your mouse wheel, you can zoom in. So if you have a mouse with a wheel, you can zoom in. Maybe if, if you're on a Mac, it works maybe a bit different. I apologize. So I'm just talking about Windows computers or Windows. So you have alt key and uh, um, the mouse wheel just goes in and out. So it's very useful. If you just use a mouse wheel, then it goes just up and down or so you cannot even go left and right. But basically you have your uh, finger on alt and then you can easily kind of zoom in and out. And I'll be using this without even realizing. So you just have to be aware that the reason, yeah, I'm kind of zooming in using alt, okay? So I will be constantly doing <laughs> doing this. That's the first thing. And, uh, and yeah, there are some other shortcuts that I will show you later, uh, like for moving and of course copying and so on. Um, okay, then the, on the right are additional additional parts, uh, additional kind of um, toolbars. And the most important ones is maybe this one here, it's called history. I guess I can also move it somehow differently, but 
this history uh, just records the history. So everything that you do uh, will kind of appear in steps here and you can go back or so you can either go undo with, you know, control Z. So you can you know, edit, undo, control Z, or you can just go here, basically see all the steps. Uh, currently there's there are no really steps, but they will appear here and you can go backwards. So that's the important part because that one you use all the time. And then there are of course colors here, swatches, the colors are here. Uh, but the more the, the another most important one are layers here. So layers are important just because I but this you will basically have always open, or at least I have it always open. Uh, you can minimize it like this. So layers, all the layers that you have, they appear here. Uh, sorry, they appear here. So that's this layer stack. Currently, there's only just uh, there's just the background. And um, yeah, I'll spend a lot of time kind of clicking through this this tab here. Uh, and then there's of course many other things like these channels and so on. Then those we will I will try to keep the workflow as simple as possible. Okay, so um, and then on the top here are all the additional options. So and I cannot really go. So we will go step by step as we're using them. Um, but I cannot really go through all of them now because there's quite many. But for example, I can show you where you can see now some information about the size of the image. Or so there's the image here, and there is image size. Or right? first, there is actually mode. Okay, the mode tells us what is the the color mode of the image. So if you remember, I talked about RGB and a CMYK, uh, and this just basically tells us how the pixels look like. Or right? um, so so. What are their values? If I have a color image, it's RGB, but sometimes I just like to work in grayscale, so I just have black and white. Uh, so this you can change. You can change this mode here. Uh, I'm just clicking here, and that's it. Here you don't see it because it's kind of black and white. Okay, here's a step. You go backwards to open again. Okay, so here you see the color mode of the image, and this is usually fixed. So if you have a document, you don't really change this. It's it's always fixed. Um, then these are the adjustments, color adjustments that you can do on the image. And I'll show you some of these, but here let's go first to this image size. Or if I go to image size, here it tells me the size of the image and this is actually in pixels. So pixels are, and here I can actually change the size of the image. Um, so manually, this, this, is, uh, this, is, um, this is a global adjustment or, so I can go to percent and I can write here 50, 50% and this is the resolution so pixels per inch so the uh, the density of pixels or so this is actually quite low but sometimes there's like 300 depending on on the, on what you're using and um, so if I if I scale this down I say okay I want to know 50% I press okay now my image will shrink or it it'll, it'll, it'll just become smaller this takes a while okay so maybe a bit harder to see uh, but there are there are more pixels or and I can go again, I can go again, um, image, image size, again, 50, up. And now it's a bit faster because the image is smaller. And I have these pixels also in Photoshop. If I zoom in, I can actually literally see the pixels here. Um, and, um, and yeah, if I go again, image size, you can see the image is now 500 by 600 something pixels. It says here the image size. Um, that's it. So this is how I can kind of um, influence the, the size of the image in a very global way. Um, sometimes it's useful, of course, if you want to resize your image. Um, you can also scale it in a non-uniform way. So you can kind of stretch it or if you want, just have this um, non-uniform parameter. So it's not 50%, but it's 50 and 60% or whatever you want. Okay, let's look at a little bit of color. Uh, in Photoshop, again, as as well as in many other software um, that works with raster graphics, there's always, um, you always, they somehow always offer two colors. So there is the so-called foreground color and the background color, and they are shown here. So here my foreground color is red, I can click on it. And uh, that's the part that I showed you or the, the toolbar that I showed you in the presentation. Uh, I can basically change my color here, the numbers here change. And I can, for example, go all the way to the, to the black or, or I can, for example, I can sample a color here. They see if I go on the image, there's like a small eyedropper or, and um, I can click on a pixel and it appears here. So I can see actually what's the, what is the color of that pixel or so I can kind of 
I can basically uh, pick the color from the uh, from the image. And um, yeah, okay, so let's maybe put it to black. And uh, this one I have in the background, that's the that's the so-called background color. So I can use them, for example, that's going to be the color when I'm erasing something, when I'm deleting using the eraser tool, that's the background will kind of appear. And otherwise, if I use a brush, then the, I'm using the foreground color. All right, that's the idea. Okay, and they're actually here. There's a brush here, brush tool. You can click it and in a very rough way, I'm kind of drawing or uh, again, go control Z, so to undo, or again, you can just go here under actions and go backwards, just click on the previous action to go backwards. You can actually see how it, how it appears. Um, if I have a brush selected, right click, I get the brush size or so I can make a brush bigger and there's something called hardness and I can actually maybe show you that. So I'm again unzooming so I can just draw very roughly uh, with this brush, right click, I can change the size. This is of course very rough, but, uh, and I can change the hardness or I can go hardness zero. And now I'm getting kind of softer edges or, so this is how I can sort of draw directly on the image. This is of course very crude, um, but sometimes you can use it to sort of quickly correct things and so on. Uh, or I can do the opposite. I can go to eraser tool, tool here. And if I basically erase, it's, it is erasing with this um, background color or so uh, in this case is white because kind of we are assuming that our paper is white, but it can be also of course something else. Okay, these are of course, again, very crude tools. So you would use them more if you're doing an illustration. Um, okay, so let's go back. So that's the image size. Uh, and actually let's go all the way back. I'll just, I, you, you can just undo everything that you did by just going here again under this um, history and just go all the way to open and your image is now fully restored. Be careful, um, there is a limit to how many of these steps are recorded. So after a while, you cannot really go back anymore. You, there's a way you can do like snapshots and stuff, but you cannot really go, if you do many steps, uh, you might not be able to go backwards um, as much as you want. Okay, uh, then there's another option. If you go image, there is the canvas size. Also there's image size and canvas size. Canvas size is, that's the, that's not resizing the image. It's, it's, this is increasing the number of pixels. Or, so if I, for example, go here under percent, I can say, well, I want my canvas to be double the size or so width and height to hundred percent. And this is showing the direction of expansion. Or if I do this, now my actually image that I had before stays the same, but I just get more pixels on the size. Or so now somehow the, the size of the canvas changed without resizing the image inside. Or so these are kind of two different concepts uh, a little bit. And I went back now. Okay. And then now in the layers, I just want to show you now how you can start kind of building up things. Or so this is now all one layer. This is a background and it's even locked. Um, but I can select all of it, or I can, here there's a selection tool. I can either select it like this, or I can say control A does the same thing. So control A uh, just kind of selects everything. And I can go, you know, edit, um, cut, or control X cuts the, cuts the, cuts my image or So now again, I cut it. So background color is white. So um, I get kind of this paper and I can go, you know, edit paste. Okay, so now I returned it here, but I get, I get it now in a different layer. So every, every time you paste something, uh, the Photoshop puts it in a different layer. Or so now suddenly I have two, two layers. There's the background and there's the layer here, layer one. And um, if I, this preview here, this is an eye here, I can kind of remove them. Uh, so the Photoshop is displaying kind of empty space or empty canvas with these uh, weird, um, weird checkered, checkered area. So every time you see this, um, uh, this pattern, this means that this just means there's nothing there or so there are no pixels there for Photoshop to display. I can, for example, put back my layer one, which is this image. And now I can start using the eraser or there's an eraser here. And oh, wait, I have to. So if, if you get this, um, error that, that uh, you cannot do anything with an eraser. It just means that you didn't select the layer. It says here, 
or not complete a request because no layers are selected. So when you're drawing, when you're doing anything, you, you have to kind of, you do it on a layer. Or so one of these layers needs to be selected. And sometimes it is selected, sometimes it gets unselected by accident. Okay, so if I select layer one, now I can do something on that layer one. I can use the eraser. And now if I erase, ta-da. So I, I get my background door. I just realized I don't have many minutes left. So I want to show you a few things that are maybe useful. So for example, um, let's try to cut out. So I chose this picture because they are very um, clean lines or, so I can, for example, um, let's cut out this area here. Or So I can select, use the select tool, but I can select here only a rectangle. Or, so I need a bit finer selection. So I can go here under, uh, there's this one here called, what is it called? Polygonal lasso tool. Or, so I can just kind of click with this one and I'm basically selecting in some kind of, a, yeah, I'm kind of creating like a polygon that is my selection. Uh, okay, now this is how my selection looks like. And one other very useful uh, thing is that you can actually see how you're, you can, well, we'll do this also later um, in the later sessions, the selections. But for example, I can go here under color. There's this icon here called the mask or selection mask. If I click it, now I actually see what's selected or I so see the what's red that's not selected. And uh, what is kind of the true color, that's the part that I selected before. And I can, of course, now, well, I'll show you this a little bit later, but uh, basically this is how I can do selections. And now I selected this part of layer one. I can go again, edit, you know, copy, edit, paste. I added this, so I kind of copy pasted it and it's there, I, again, just don't see it. But if I remove the background layer, I can actually see it, or this is my part that I, uh, that I cut out or so this is my element now I can for example move it around I can uh, uh, use this uh, what is this this uh, move tool I can also just use um, if I press control this move appears so I can just kind of move it around okay um, and let's cut out a few other things maybe I will cut out um, this background wall here or now actually let's cut out this part here. Okay, so again, I have to be careful where am I, where am I cutting from or so it's layer one is my, um, the kind of full image or again, I go here, uh, polygonal kind of lasso, hop, hop. And of course I'm doing this a bit approximately, but hop and I can one, I can go, um, you know, copy, paste and it appears here. So now I have two of these and let's actually do, uh, let's do one more or so let's do this um let's do this wall in the background or so i can for example quickly um select this wall in the background and then yeah i just realized i have one more minute but you will apologize if i just extend this a little bit we'll continue also with this example uh, next time but just want to show you a few things to emphasize this idea but yeah, we, we are basically working with the collage. So we have an image and we can kind of cut and paste elements. We can copy them and so on. So I'm just here, okay. And now I can go all the way up um, here. Hop, I can hold shift to kind of go straight up. And here it's a bit hard to see. Okay, here's the error. So you can actually select areas that are outside of your image. Okay, they, are, they look like they're outside, but um, Everything that is outside will not really be selected or so I can go again, edit, copy, edit, paste. Okay, now I have all of these areas here. And, uh, and you can notice now it's important if you want to save this, uh, you cannot save it as a JPEG anymore or you can save it as a JPEG, but then it becomes flat or everything becomes flat. If you want to work on it later, uh, it's important to um, uh, save it as Photoshop file or so I would go here file save as and uh, we have it here surface recoloring and I'll just put today's date uh, 210304 um, surface recoloring and I'll put 01 okay so these PSD files are unfortunately very big so they can get quite big very fast so they might be 100 megabytes or something uh, but they they will basically um, all the information is now saved or so 
um, all these layers are in there. Okay, and then just to finish this up, um, I want to show you how you can individually, um, how you can kind of change the colors of these areas or so I can, for example, select, um, for example, this part here, this guy, and I can go here uh, under image adjustment. And again, there are many adjustments that you can do, but let's do quickly this hue saturation. Also, there's a shortcut control view. Hue saturation is basically changing, it's kind of recoloring this image or so I can uh, do it like this. If I want, let me see, it's a bit, ah, no, sorry, I'm uh, choosing the wrong one. So it's uh, this one here, okay. So again, edit uh, image adjustment, hue saturation. Uh, you can kind of recolor this part. Okay, but for example, you can put here colorize. Okay, now, now I have it a bit nicer, okay. So I can change the hue, maybe you do it all the way red, maybe some kind of nice pinkish saturation. So color saturation, and this is the kind of lightness or I can maybe go a little bit darker. Um, okay. And now, of course, if I bring back my, uh, if I bring back my, um, my image, basically, I kind of have an overlay. Or let me do quickly. There are some questions, but I will just answer them quickly. Let's do this guy here. So I can edit adjustment, hue saturation, colorize, and then hue is maybe also some kind of pinkish, higher saturation, maybe something like this. Okay, and then the the wall, the big wall, we will also do it under image adjustments, hue saturation, colorize. And um, yeah, let's put something again, kind of a bit pinkish here, higher up. Okay, something like this. Okay, so now kind of really quickly, I basically changed the colors of these. Um, I changed in a very rough way, the colors of these areas. Again, this is my background. These are the parts that are sort of separately on the top and um, there's a the background and even you know I can just in theory because this is a patch on top I can just take it and move it around or so you can now see that they are basically separate separate patches or I will show you how to do things but there's of course um, you can also be a bit smarter in how you use um, Photoshop kind of in your workflow and adjustment layers are one of these. So you can kind of, uh, you can um, you can work in a fish, you can kind of retrace your steps better. And um, you can sometimes, you know, change things that you did in the past. Uh, and that of course makes you a bit faster and more precise and, you know, less, less stressful. Uh, but I will show you a little bit kind of the, um, I would say a simple workflow as possible in order to not confuse you with sort of too many things, but yeah, we'll show you. Um, I'll show you some of the other stuff there as well. Okay, so um, again, uh, I'll kind of sort of repeat certain things. Um, if I have, if I'm holding Alt key and go with my mouse wheel, I can actually zoom in really, really quickly. So that's a good, um, that's a good shortcut. Uh, then there are these parts here uh, that were like these. Um, stair sides, I call them here. Ah, you can rename. So here on the right, there are the layers or so that's a very, very important um, tab here. You can click it, it comes up. It's basically layers are important and there's another one here on the top, uh, which is history. So you can kind of see uh, the things that are, that you kind of, you know, as you go along. Uh, so these two are maybe the most important. There's some question in chat, let's see. Shortcut L, okay. Uh, ah, layers, yeah, okay, could be. Uh, okay, and um, you can rename the layers or so uh, here I can have this, um, if I double click here, I can just rename the layer so I can sort of quickly see what it is. Uh, that's at least my kind of principle. Uh, then you can, um, with this small I, you can sort of preview or dispreview layers, uh, the star side, yeah. And uh, the order of the layers matters or so you can think of this, there's this photograph here, it's very at the very bottom, I can just preview it. Now, basically the whole background is transparent, there's nothing there. So uh, this is basically an alpha channel or so alpha channel kind of full transparency, this is how Photoshop shows a transparent background. And, um, you know, if I take this, 
element here and um, I just move it down under the photograph, it will disappear. Or so it's still here, but the photograph is now on top of it. Or so you can think of this as basically uh, order of, well, you have pieces of paper and then you have your order. Or so that's kind of, I hope that's sort of clear. You can quickly move elements. So if I click on my, um, sorry, this one here, uh, you have to select a layer or so this is, if I click here, I don't have any layers selected. Now um, I cannot even do anything. So if you try to paint or something, uh, you cannot do it uh, because when you paint, when you add pixels, so this, for example, brush here, uh, you have to, you have to be, you have to add it in some layer or so if I dis, deselect um, all the layers here, I, I will lose the ability to actually do anything. Or so I have to select the layer, say, okay, this one here, and um, now you can kind of you know, start painting if you want, okay? Uh, but for example, I can, if I hold control, I can hold control key, I can quickly move things around. Or so this was the original one and the original position, I can kind of move it, move it uh, really easily back. Or so I will use this control to move things around. And um, okay, control, if I want to move it uh, in an orthogonal way, uh, then, uh -huh, I don't think it's okay. If I want to move it in an orthogonal way, I'm holding shift or so this is kind of a shift here. And I can I think also lock certain directions if I do it so I can kind of move it a little bit in a more precise way. And then another uh, convenient shortcut is if I um, hold control key and alt key, I'm actually copying so I can move things and I can copy them around or so again, control alt, and you see my cursor changes and I can basically copy the elements or so now they suddenly become, um, yeah, they, I have kind of created sort of a copy. Uh, and of course this looks now spatial but there's nothing really spatial about it. So this is a, this is just a flat image with, with kind of layers on top of each other. Uh, and they just look spatial because of the spatial illusion or because, um, yeah, because they're cut, cut like that. So this is not a, this is not a three dimensional, um, Kind of document or anything like that, uh, but it is sort of a multi-layered document. Okay, uh, and of course you can go undo. So if I can go here, I can just undo everything. If I just go back um, steps, I can kind of remove everything that I did. Okay, now uh, I want to show you quickly, for example, how to do if I want to uh, create maybe this area here a bit darker, or uh, I can select the background photograph. So you can select things by again pressing control and just clicking on things. Or if I click, for example, on the background, um, I'll select the photograph. If I click on this element here with control, I will basically select um, uh, this side. Or so by kind of holding control and clicking around, I can select different name, uh, different parts of my drawing, or I can of course select them just directly here on the right. So it's always good to know, of course, which one you have uh, selected. And uh, yeah, let's select the photograph. So I click here and I will use the burn tool. So there's a burn tool uh, here. And I want to darken a bit the area behind to make it look like there's a shadow or, and here I, I can select uh, what am I darkening? So mid tones, shadows or highlights, and there's, this is the exposure. So how much, uh, and you can see by doing this, I kind of sort of darkened this area or it kind of, it's a bit crude. Maybe I can, if I go right click, I can make my brush a bit smaller uh, and and maybe I can try it a bit again. I'm kind of darkening this area here. Okay. Um, now you can notice that uh, I'm kind of darkening, but I can kind of, you know, it, this is not really realistic or I'm kind of darkening. Uh, I want to just darken the side or so. Uh, how do I kind of prevent my burn to sort of, you know, leak into the, you know, on this top part where it shouldn't be. Well, there are different ways to do it. I could sort of select this area of the photograph and say, if I select it, then the selection now means that only the things that are in the selection I can I can affect. Or so if, if I go again, my burn here, I can now darken, but now uh, the selection kind of uh, prevents me from sort of affecting anything that is, that is beyond. Uh, Okay, so that's one way of doing it. And maybe I want to do it a bit softer. So I'll just do it kind of a little bit again here. 
Uh, maybe I just want to do really, really subtly kind of around. Okay, something like this. Uh, but you know, maybe if I don't want to really click what I just did now, there's another way of sort of quickly selecting or so I, I already have this object here, this one here, and I can sort of quickly get a selection that goes around the edges of this object. And I do this by holding control and clicking on the layer here on the right. If I click it, I basically now get sort of this layer is now selected or the edges of this layer are selected. And I can move this selection or I can move it because I know it's the same size as before, okay? So now I have the side again selected. I have to go back to photograph and I can do the same thing. Or so now again, burn and I kind of do a bit hard here. Of course, I'm not really burning everything uh, or not creating, you know, uh, okay. So you can kind of play a little bit around to create sort of a shadow effect. This burn is, is maybe a good way to create um, uh, create a shadow because basically what it does it's it is it is darkening uh, the image or uh, and darkening the pixel so you're 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 not really you're not really adding um, kind of dark or black pixels but you are you're just darkening the pixels that are already there uh, it makes it a bit more uh, realistic okay um, okay that's uh, okay so that's the selection. Um, Okay, and I want to show you a little bit more about selecting or so let's say I want to select uh, this side here. Uh, so I would go here to photograph and I could um, uh, go here under this polygonal selection and I can start kind of now selecting this side, maybe I want to paint it uh, differently. Okay. And now I want to at the same time select this side here as well and this one here. And the question is, how do I actually do this? Um, because now I'm, I'm a bit kind of trapped with this selection. So there's a very cool mode in Photoshop. It's called, um, uh, what is it called? It's called, uh, let me see, mask. So, uh, it's called quick mask mode, or it's here on the uh, left on the bottom. If I click it, um, now basically only the things that I selected are, uh, are shown in true color. Uh, everything else that is not selected is shown in in red and this I can use also now to sort of quickly select things um, and I can kind of do this additive selection or so I'm just going to select all of these sides and what am I actually doing I'm kind of deleting this red thing or so if I just press delete I kind of deleted the or create deleted these sort of red pixels here so that means this is now selected if I exit the mask mode here on the bottom left now these two parts are selected or so I can use this mask mode to, to uh, yeah, to kind of create a mask uh, selection. There are of course different ways that you can select things, and later I will show you some other. Sometimes you can do things a bit faster. Uh, this is a bit sort of slow way, but uh, just want to demonstrate that sometimes this is also enough. I actually do quite a lot of these sort of manual selections because I like sharp edges. Uh, okay, I'll do a few more. Okay, delete and uh, yeah, just gonna do a few more. Okay. You can also save this uh, selection. Okay, I think this is enough. Let's use uh, these ones here. So I exit uh, mask mode and I have the selection. So you can also save the selection, but that's, I never found that very useful. You can go here in the se select and there's a um, save somewhere, save selection. Uh, so you can save the selection, you can load it later, but I personally never found this very useful. So I will not do it now, but you can for sure now when you select the photograph, you know, edit copy, edit paste. And now these ones are also added uh, here. And last time uh, somebody mentioned, um, I can now kind of sort of directly modify, I can directly modify these, uh, these sides. I'll just do uh, manually here, adjustments, hue saturation, and I can colorize and let's maybe change them. Um, yeah, maybe some color, maybe some nice kind of yellow color. Uh, yeah, something like that. Or actually blue, maybe something blue. 
Okay, something like that. I increase a bit lightness. Okay. Okay, so this is how you can kind of quickly sort of uh, recolor, uh, recolor things. Okay, super quickly back uh, to uh, adjustment. Just show you correctly now the adjustment layers. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, we have these stair fronts here, and I can use them as a my kind of selection outline. Or so, if I press Control and click on the layer here on the right. Uh, the outlines will be selected, and now I can just also remove them if I want. So disperse them, select the photograph here, and again go kind of you know Control C, Control V, or Control uh, Edit Copy, Edit Paste, and they come up here. Or so now I have them here as these uh, stair fronts, and now I can go. I can just call them again stair fronts again, kind of just different version. Uh, and then I go here under uh, adjustment layer. So create new adjustment layer. And again, we'll use this hue saturation. Okay. And uh, let me just click okay, actually. Okay, so, um, so I can do adjustments, but basically I have to click this small icon here, which says this adjustment affects all layers below. And if I click it now, it affects only the uh, the layer that is directly below it, which is this stair fronts here. And now it's easy. Now I can, um, this is this um, um, kind of use saturation uh, panel. So I can put colorize here and I can choose some kind of a maybe nice pink color in this case, maybe a bit yeah, maybe like this. Uh, okay, something like this in this sense. Okay. Uh, and um, and and now I have this adjustment kind of applied, but I can also change it. Or so later I can kind of do different things. And if I click here again, double click here again, I can just I can just change. Or so I can say, no, actually pink is not good. I want to change it to blue. Uh, I can sort of easily easily change it, and that's good because sometimes, of course, you want to leave things a little bit open. So you might want to. Uh, you know, select different parts of the image and then decide on the, you know, final color just uh, later. Or so this is how you do it.